Entering the dungeon is easy, but will you get out of it alive? Game Masters here, and I'm a fan of different varieties of games, but I especially enjoy games that don't cost an arm and a leg, and games made by the lesser known game company. Today, we are checking out the solo playbook Four Against Darkness, a rather unique type of game book by Ganesha Games. With this book, you don't need a DM, you simply play by yourself. It reads, Four Against Darkness is a solitaire dungeon delving game that may also be played cooperatively. Uh, more on that in a moment. No miniatures are needed. All you need is this book, a pencil, two six-sided die, and graph paper. Choose your characters from the list of classic types, warrior, wizard, rogue, halfling, dwarf, barbarian, cleric, elf. Equip them and adventure into dungeons created by dice rolls and your own choices. You will fight monsters, manage resources, grab treasure, dodge traps, find clues, and even accept quests. Your characters will level up, becoming more powerful with each game, if they survive. Sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands, shake up the dice and just see what lands where. Sometimes you gotta play with yourself, play by yourself. That sounds a little bit better. I should probably change the thumbnail on this video, but I digress. Let's take a look at how to play this game solo. The party is broken down into four characters, and if I had one complaint, it would be that they, uh, the creators have, have kind of mixed classes and races, treating them all as a class. And that's a little confusing for me, uh, to see an elf or a dwarf as simply a class, but in this book's case, it's really just a matter of semantics. You'll pick four characters, uh, warrior, cleric, uh, elf, dwarf, the, the ones we mentioned earlier. And if you want to play with someone else other than yourself, you could pick two characters and let the other person pick two. Or theoretically, four people could play and just pick one character each. You'll start off at level one, and as you adventure, you'll gain experience. But you do get to start off with some basic equipment and a small handful of gold, which you can use to buy equipment, uh, bribe monsters, and you can even pay a, a healer to fix you up. All the fun stuff that you can use gold on in your average role-playing game. Now, as mentioned, you can also use your gold to buy equipment, from bandages to rope, from weapons to, to potions of healing. You can also sell off equipment that you find down in the dungeons. Now, before we jump into the dice and how they work, I need to thank a few people that have given support to this channel. These fine dungeon delving supporters have helped this channel to grow by becoming members. And if you'd like to see how you too can join, I'll leave a link down in the description. As for dice, they are used to determine random elements throughout the game, but they are used along with your decisions of what to do. The game length will greatly be determined by the choices you make, but do understand that this is um, not one of those choose your own adventure type books, uh, you know, where you, you read a section and are given a choice of, of two different page numbers to, to uh, flip to. Instead, you're going to roll dice and reference a room table. This is where the graph paper comes in. You'll simply draw out the shape that the dice roll. The game uses two six-sided dice. Sometimes you roll only one of them, other times you'll roll both. Sometimes you'll add a positive modifier to the roll, other times there might be a negative modifier, and occasionally you'll add your character's level to the roll. If you happen to roll a six, you'll immediately roll a second d6 and will add that result to the first roll. If you roll a six again, you repeat the process. And they call this the explosive six rule. Basically, you can go berserk and can actually take down multiple monsters or possibly even uh, roll saves that exceed six. You'll also uh, make an XP uh, experience roll from time to time, and, and I'll explain that in a moment as well. There's also a mechanic referenced to as a D6-6. Several games use this mechanic, but basically you roll two six-sided die. And I use two different colors. Uh, one is designated as the tens, and the other is designated as the units. So for example, if I roll uh, these dice, and the first is a three, and the second is a five, that's a 35. This mechanic is mostly used when determining the shape of the room that you've just entered. Dungeons wouldn't work too well without the denizens lurking in the shadows. Four Against Darkness uses traditional monsters. Uh, ghosts, mummies, orcs, uh, dragons, rats, vampires, trolls, zombies, stuff like that. But there are even boss monsters and something that they call weird monsters. Boss monsters pretty much rule over an entire section of the dungeon, sometimes the entire dungeon itself. And your objective may be to destroy that boss, uh, where the weird monsters, uh, regardless of where you find them, will grant you an XP roll. I said a moment ago that I'd explain experience, uh, or the XP roll. Okay, so when you kill a boss monster or slay monsters from at least 10 different encounters, or if you kill a weird monster, you roll an XP roll. If that number is higher than your current level, then you gain a level. So fighting monsters is a quick way to kind of earn experience and level up. 
As you move through the dungeon, you're going to encounter monsters, but you'll also be able to search. There may be traps in the rooms, and every room has the potential to be hiding a small pile of gold, even a clue, something that will let you know, uh, for example, a specific monster's weakness or a location of a secret treasure. Doors may be locked, traps may be sprung, and the risk of certain doom that can lay inside any given room. When you've decided that you've run the dungeon enough, you can simply return to the surface and sell your loot or equip new items, all that kind of fun stuff. One of the things not found in the dungeon or in this book is the room of thumbs up. Its description is simple though. It simply states that if you're enjoying this video to please give it a thumbs up. Your reward is an imaginary 3d6 times 3d6 coins of gold. Tables are heavily used to determine what happens next, from dungeon layout to random encounters. You'll make use of a room contents table. Uh, this tells you what may be in any given room. There is a special features table. This one tells you if there is, uh, well, a feature, like a, a fountain or, or a statue in the room. Of course, there is also a traps table, a special events table, treasure table, magic treasure table, uh, a vermin table, and these are little monsters that grant no experience but are still something that you have to fight off. I mean, the list of tables goes on and on, which is what makes each play of this game very unique. While some of the encounters may happen in the same game, each game that you play is going to be randomly different because of the dice roll and the uh, need to look up on the different tables. Ganesha Games has even made additional adventures for Four Against Darkness. The two that I have are or uh, Caves of the Kobold Slave Masters, which is recommended for characters levels 1 or 2, and The Three Rings, which was designed for characters of levels 3 and 4. Friend and fellow YouTuber John over at Dragons and Flagons made a video about this game, and I... <laughs> After watching it, I immediately purchased a copy, without hesitation. I'm not disappointed. The price is right. I mean, these three books cost me less than uh, two large pizzas, and the entertainment has been well worth it. Ganesha has many more books than uh, just these three. Um, they've even got ones that are based on horror, uh, even sci-fi. If it's something you want to check out, I'll leave a link down in the description as to where you can grab your copy. What do you think about games like this that are designed for you to play with uh, by yourself? Self. I know that a lot of gamers uh, prefer to do it in groups, but let me know down in the comments how this kind of game rubs you. Until next Our Paths Cross, may you find 3d6 times 3d6 gold pieces.